everybody welcome back to my channel um so i am at home i've been at home for a couple days now since the new year's passed um just taking a break and um well not really taking a break i didn't complete some online courses so they took me off duty so i've been off for a couple days um since the new year's but um i just wanted to come on here and tell you guys how i got my cdl um with nothing out of pocket i didn't pay for my cdl um i didn't have to do any reimbursement anything like that it was 100 percent paid for and i wanted to let you guys know how i did that so first of all i went through a program called wioa and it is um a government funded program it's also known as sc works so i live in south carolina so it's sc works so if you're in another state like i know north carolina is nc works so if you're looking for it look it up in your state it may be um up under that or it may be up under wioa either way it go it's in majority of the states in the united states and um like i said it is government funded you do have to go through some requirements to get in the program so um just off the top of my head i know for one you have to either be on unemployment i think have medicaid or medicare or something like that um have snap benefits um what else you can Okay, so here's a screen recording of the SC Works website. You can look this up in whatever city and state you're in. But yeah, here are the requirements. Um, it says it's for low income people and also individuals who are on um, unemployment. And it's also for kids too. They have a program for youth. So yeah, if you want to pause and read, feel free to um but yeah this is just for south carolina so you have to look it up for where you are so in addition to paying for the actual cdl uh, class they also paid and reimbursed me for any of the gas that i spent going to the class they also offered to pay child care for um, my children so it's a really really good program I don't know it's a few other ways you can get in the program so um, yeah so I signed up for it and when you initially go through they give you like a caseworker or something like that I forget the technical name for it but it's basically like a caseworker and she tells you the steps that you need to take before you even get into any program so they don't just do CDL so rather you want to go back to college and do something else if you want to get a degree in let's say you want to do culinary arts or you want to be a cosmetologist or you want to do anything basically they they help you fund it um, they basically get a lump sum of funding at the beginning of the year and they um, and burst it out to people who enrolled in the program and it's just for that so I got my caseworker and I had to take a series of tests. So before I took the test, they gave you study guides and practice tests that you had to fulfill before you can take the actual test. So the tests were math, um, language arts, and reading, um, like reading a paragraph and answering questions about the paragraph. So like comprehension, things like that. Um, and you had to get of a certain level to even enter into the program so um, yeah so I did those tests and it didn't make sense to me why you had to take those tests because in order to even get in the program you had to show your high school diploma so basically it was like you take your diploma you had to show your transcripts all those things which come to find out people in who were in my class they fudge their information but so you know there's always a, a way around those things but anyway um yeah so the tests they were 
easy but kind of hard at the same time like for me it was easy anything i really put my mind to i can do so it wasn't that hard for me i just had to study a little bit and then went through and passed the test um because i did go to college for two years to be a nurse and um it wasn't for me so i dropped out but i didn't drop out because it was too hard it just wasn't for me when i my first year of college i had a 4.0 and was on in the honor society so those kind of things they're not hard to me but for other people it may be so they give you a chance to practice but um, moving on, once you pass that test and you get a little certificate saying you pass, you now, um, well, anyway, I had a choice of schools that I wanted to go to. So they gave me like three choices. And um, from those three, before I made my decision, I called um, each one of those. Well, no, I called two of them because one of them I knew I didn't want to go to. But I called two of them and I made sure that they um, tested and practiced on a manual transmission because I did not, or manual engine, I did not want to be tested on an automatic because I knew that would cause a restriction on my license. So uh, after I did the calling, I narrowed it down to the one. Go take a drug test. Chose them. No matter what you're doing in this field, rather you're in school, you're about to anything like that you're gonna be drug tested you're gonna be drug tested so prior to this I want to say three months prior to you figuring out that you want to do truck driving or pursue truck driving you need to get clean I don't know you know other people's life choices or whatever but if you smoke or you dabble in the drugs or you do whatever make sure that you're clean before you enroll in school i say that because when you go get your dot physical you're getting drug tested when on your first day of school even if it's not on the first day if it's on the second day third day whatever you're going to get drug tested even after you still when you get your first job you're getting drug tested so just make sure you're clean guys uh, because I had a guy in my um, my class and he went through the program or whatever and he was so eager to get these things done and get his, get on the road, make his money. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to do flatbed and he, he wanted to go with TMC. But um, long story short, we got into the, se um, the, yeah, it was going into the second week and they pulled him came back time. negative and um he had i guess before school and or whatever he went on a um trip to vegas and um you know ate edibles and by the time he got to um cdl school it still showed up in his system so guys yeah We're make sure you're clean to be four to five weeks but we end up being there for six weeks um that school I would recommend it to other people. The only negative thing that um, my school had was they only had one truck. So it constantly, within those six weeks, it was in the shop, I want to say maybe four or five times, which prevented us from going out a few times. So yeah, but other than that, it was a great school. When you get in, you um, listen to videos, you watch videos. That's the worst part for me. I didn't like um, the first week you watch videos and around the third or fourth day my trainer um, He broke it up. He said, you know, people can't function like this You can't just sit in a classroom for hours and hours watching videos So he broke us broke it up. So on the third day he took us out. We didn't drive or anything like that. We um, We went over backing so the first thing he taught us was the straight back which when you when you first do it it's kind of complicated but after you do it a few times you realize that's the easiest okay so like i said we went out and we backed and at first seeing that it's your first time in a vehicle that's not connected the trailers moving things like that it's kind of complicated for you but after doing it a few times you get it and after that 
you realize straight back is the easiest back that you can do. Like, honestly, it's, it's easy. Um, so yeah, after that, we, um, of course went in and finished up the videos or whatever and continuously worked on our backing. After the straight back, we did offset. So offset is just moving from one lane to the other lane. And, um, that one once you got the straight back it wasn't that hard um what was hard was the third and final backing maneuver which is the parallel it was hardest for me I'm not gonna say for everybody else but for me that parallel backing was terrible and i want to say that because i feel like i didn't get enough time to practice um we learned the parallel back on the last week of um, school. So on the sixth week, that's when he finally pulled out the parallel. And so, and even then, it wasn't a full week. We missed two days, I want to say, of that week because truck maintenance. So um, when I went to take the road test, we had to go to the DMV. Some schools let you test right there at the school. Um, they're DOT, not DOT, but they're DMV certified to test you. But my school, they could have done it, but they didn't want to. My trainer said that he wouldn't be um, fair. He probably would pass everybody. So he chose, they chose not to test at the school. So they send you to the DMV, you get your test date and you go up there. They, um, you go to the school, pick up the truck, y'all drive to the DMV and um, take the test. So, um, yeah, so after, after, after the class, you basically in CDO class, you doing videos, you're taking little tests. We didn't take them. We went over them, but they weren't counted for anything. So you take little book tests, you learn how to do your paper logs, you, um, you do your backing maneuvers, you learn your pre-trip, which for me was the easiest part some people think it's harder the pre-trip for me was the easiest part of it besides the driving driving was easy backing was my only problem but um yeah so you do your pre-trip you learn your backing and you learn your road you know your road maneuvers you learn how to maintain your lane how to um handle traffic how to handle um rain and things like that well if it rained you know while you're out your trainer he may take you out in the rain we did um you do your uh night driving i think it's three hours of night driving that's required so you do that um and then you take your test so for me on um the day of the test now mind you they warned us or told us stories that, you know, some of the guys, they would bring their family out and, you know, have them watch and things like that. So they told us, probably don't want to do that. Me, I'm hard-headed. I'm close to my family. So I figured, and then the DMV was like maybe 10 minutes from my house. So, or my mom's house. So I told her to come and peek and watch. You know, she didn't have to make herself known. Just peek and watch because I wanted my mom there for like more support or whatever. So we get up there and I do the pre-trip flawlessly, like word for word, just like my my trainer taught me. Um, perfect. Pass that flying colors. Um, then it's time for your backing maneuvers. So I do the straight back. Boom. Hit it. I think I pulled up. No, I didn't pull up any with the straight back. And then did the offset. I think I pulled up twice. So that didn't count. The two pull-ups, you get two free pull No, I think three full free pull-ups. And, um, you know, they don't count against anything. So I think I used two of them. And did that perfectly. When I got to that parallel part, I don't know what happened. No, I do know what happened. The DMV is set up on an incline so it's like a slight slope but at my school when we're practicing it's straight straight across the board and mind you i told you that we only had um three days of real practice on that 
because we missed two days because of truck maintenance. So yeah, we missed two days of that practice, that good practice because of truck maintenance. So I get there and it was like I had never touched a truck before in my life. That trailer and that truck was just everywhere. I could not get it in the hole. I use every single pull up that you can use every single pull up that you can use and after a while he was just like okay you're done you know you ran out of pull ups you know come back again and I was so disappointed I wasn't embarrassed or anything I was just disappointed because I didn't feel like I had adequate enough practice on that maneuver and that's what stopped me from proceeding on because at my DMV you cannot if you fail one part you cannot go on to the next you have to pass them all so just because i passed the pre-trip and failed the backing i couldn't proceed on with the driving so um i didn't have to redo the pre-trip when i went back i just had to start with the backing and then move on from there so yeah we rescheduled we went inside we rescheduled the date i was so discouraged um my date was a week I think a week after that um but i didn't let it i didn't let it get to me too bad but yeah it was kind of you know it was kind of discouraging like it would be for anybody but luckily my trainer um he scheduled me and he was already on to his next class but he scheduled me in to practice when they practice so he just threw me in rotation with them so i got a little more practice with that during that week time during that week wait to retake my test so I went in for the second round and like I said, I didn't have to take the pre-trip anymore. That was passed. Um, I started with the backing. Okay, so just because I passed the straight back and the offset, that doesn't mean that I didn't have to retake it. I had to take them all over again. So um, we started out on my second time taking the test. I started out with the straight back did that just fine did the offset did that just fine i don't think i used any pull-ups for those two because i already had those down pat but with the parallel i think i pulled up twice and got it right in there if i'm not mistaken it was either once or twice but anyway i got it in there so perfectly so smoothly i was so proud of myself and i knew the only reason i felt the first time is because i didn't have enough practice but yeah, I got it in there just fine. So I was so excited. And um, this time my lady, she I had a lady um, instructor or tester or whatever from the DMV and she was so calming and just nice and she made my nerves kind of go away. The first time I had a guy who was like real robotic and you know, they try to intimidate you for some reason. Like, you know, these people are already nervous. Why would you even do that to them? But that's just what they do. I'm in South Carolina. Maybe that's just a Carolina thing. I don't know. But yeah, they try to intimidate you when you come in there to take a test. So my new lady that I had, she was so relaxing, calming, nice, friendly, all those things. So yeah, um, after I passed my backing maneuvers, we went out and took the road test. And that I didn't have a problem with. I never really had a problem with driving because I... Um, came from a class B so I was already used to driving a big vehicle even though it was all in one piece but it was still a big vehicle I was used to driving it so I already knew how to maintain my lane I already knew how to drive around these idiot four-wheelers um, I already knew you know certain things I already was familiar with air brakes um, so that kind of gave me an advantage on it a little but not quite all of it but yeah it kind of came natural to me the driving even the um the um gear shifting gears I, I i did really good on that i can't lie so um i knew i would pass that part with flying colors it was just the backing that i had to get over so even though i was doing my road test um i already knew i would kind of pass not being cocky or anything but i already knew i passed that part so when we got there, um, she said, uh, well, miss, and she said my last name and she said, you pass. And I jumped up and down and I told my, um, the guy who rode with me, he, he wasn't my trainer, but he just worked there. He rode with me. 
Um, I told, I passed and he said, oh, I knew you passed because I seen you jumping up and down or whatever. So I went in, um, took my test. That, um, was the only part that I had to pay for. So with the WIOA program, they pay for all your schooling. They pay for your, you know, your drug test. They pay for your DOT physical, but they do not pay for your license when you actually pass. So I think I paid $25, which I mean, whatever, I'm a truck driver now at this point I don't care so I paid the $25 and um, went on about my day and um, yeah that ride home from you know the DMV it was I had like a little party for myself in the car I really did like I cranked the music up I went crazy so um, yeah it just felt surreal that I, all that hard work like not even the six week of school six weeks of truck driving school just like getting in the program taking that test taking all three of those tests um, going through the school getting frustrated at myself um, on some of those back and maneuvers like it, it wasn't easy it wasn't completely easy it, it took hard work um, learning the pre-trip hours and hours and hours of studying and remembering and memorizing and getting familiar with what's under the hood and everything it just all paid off in that moment so when I passed I literally threw myself a party in the car like yeah so um, um, after I took um, the test and I passed I did not immediately run off and start working and I would recommend this for you guys too I took some time off because like I said I was in school for six weeks um, and uh, it was like a regular it was like getting up for work so I was there from like 8 in the morning till like 4 or 5 in the afternoon so I just took some time off and I got my endorsements I got every single endorsement I took a little time off to get my um, endorsements so I already came from a class B so I already had my passenger and school bus um, and I had a little backlash from this on um, TikTok people seem to didn't know that there was two separate um, endorsements that there was a passenger endorsement and then there's a school bus endorsement so yes but that had nothing to do with trucking. I just had those endorsements because, like I said, I was a bus driver before that for like three months. But mm, I didn't like it, so that's another story. Um, but, yeah, um, so I got my tanker endorsement first. Then I went back and got my triples and double endorsements. And then um, I had to take a break from that because in order to get your hazmat, here I don't know if it's like this everywhere else but here you have to go and get your background um, test done and your fingerprints done and that they quote you two weeks but it took six weeks for it to come back six weeks for my fingerprints to come back so um, yeah I took all that time off the additional six weeks but so I understand some people can't do that they can't wait six weeks to start working you know they already went to school but me personally I don't have big bills I don't have you know you know I just wanted to enjoy my kids and stay home and get these endorsements before I hit the road so um yeah i had to wait six weeks for the fingerprints to come back once they came back i went and took the hazmat test and um passed it i passed all of those um i think on the first their try. computer tests so they're nothing that you have to physically go to the dmv and do they're all computerized um i used a website called chris cdl.com and it's c-r-i-s-t cdl.com and you just pick your state and the questions on the test is pretty much a verbatim of how they're going to be at um, the DMV like word for word the same exact questions the same exact answers so I use that to study um, and I pass on the first time each time so yeah that website is very helpful other people they have different apps and stuff that you can use whatever works for you just get the job done so uh, the reason why I went ahead and got all those um, endorsements hold on
the reason why I went ahead and got all my endorsements before I started working is because I was in test mode still so I don't know if you guys like this but for me um I was already in test mode so what that means is from the beginning of signing up in the program I already told you guys you're taking tests you're taking tests you're taking tests when you get in school you're taking tests when you go to the DMV you're taking tests so I was in test mode I know me if I get out of that mode it, it's a, lo a little harder for me or a little longer for me to get back in the mode for my brain to accept what I'm doing so I'm weird but yeah I was in test mode so I studied buckle down and I got those endorsements done um, I know a lot of jobs they don't require you to have them especially if you're over the road they don't require them but for what I wanted to do and what I thought I was going to do it required it and I didn't want even even besides that I didn't want to apply for a job and find something perfect for me and they say oh you got to have this endorsement or you got to have that endorsement I want to walk through the door and already have it done I didn't want to fool with the DMV I wanted it all done in one swoop so um, yeah so I got them all done the only endorsement that you have to go back and take uh, every five years is the hazmat so you have to get your fingerprints done every five years and you have to take the test over again every five years and if I if I'm uh, remembering right that's the same amount of time as when you have to renew your license I believe so yeah so you're doing that every five years which is not a big deal you just use a website study and get it done you want to do it before your license expires before your hazmat expires um that way you're not like in default but yeah um get that stuff done and um let me see what else i have some stuff written on a sticky note that's why i'm looking down but yeah um like i said i had a job that i had in mind which i was lined up to do which i was going to team with someone but that didn't go as planned so yeah i end up picking schneider and i have a specific reason why i picked schneider and i'll do that i'll do a video on the reasons why i picked schneider um at another time so yeah i just wanted to go over how i got my cdl and how you guys can get your cdl that way and um have it paid for uh, well almost completely because like i said you pay the 25 dollars if you pass but yeah um I just wanted to go over that with you guys because it's not common knowledge a lot of people don't know that I didn't know that someone told me about this program so um, yeah um, what else oh the other way I was going to get my license was I was looking online and trying to figure out ways because I, I couldn't pay five thousand dollars six thousand dollars even up to eight thousand dollars for a city of license like I don't know anybody who could but yeah other ways that I was looking to get my CDI I looked through um, I did look at Schneider but I didn't want that restriction on my license and they do have a restriction um, they do test you and everything on uh, automatic I didn't want that so I didn't go with them and I was looking online and I seen a lady she said well she went through CR England and she went through their program just to get her license and then she found another job she ended up quitting them and she found another job that had tuition reimbursement and so she went to the other company and had them pay back CR England and she got her license that way which is the route that I was going to take if I didn't find this program so um, there's plenty of different ways that you can get it but this is the way that I got mine scot free. I don't have to pay anything back. I don't need anybody's tuition reimbursement. I don't need any of that. It's just done. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching and please like, comment and subscribe. Bye.